day 11. Let's do submit files. So this is how CPM does scripting. It's just a simple batch processor. Here is one I made. And all it does is it runs the commands in the file in order. There's some simple uh, parameter substitution, but that's about it. Now, the way this works is to run it, you use this command called submit, and you give it the script and any parameters. And when you run it, it will then generate a $$.sub file on drive A, and then the CCP reads the commands from that file uh, into the keyboard buffer and just does that rather than uh, you know reading from the keyboard and it's a pretty simple setup if we dump it each command takes up a complete record that's the size of the keyboard buffer with the size in front so it can just be loaded directly into the keyboard buffer uh, instead of calling the BDOS read string function. And it's in reverse order. So in order to execute the script, all you do is you open the file, you find the last record, which in this case is this one, shove that into the keyboard buffer and reduce the size of the file by one record which actually happens through a bit of a nasty hack. Now, the submit command here, I actually got from my other CPM project, CPMish, which is a open source CPM distribution for the 8080 and Z80. How, I hear you ask, was I able to use a version of submit written for the 8080 on this 6502 system? Well, the answer is fairly straightforward. It's written in C because I have a C compiler for the 6502. I'm actually using uh, LLVM MOS, which is a port of LLVM to the uh, 6502. It generates decent enough code. The 6502 is notoriously difficult to generate code for. So the uh, that file is too big, to be honest. I'm going to make some changes later. There you go. 3k for submit, uh, 8k for stat, which is huge. So I uh, I reckon that one of the reasons why it's so big is that the program's not really well tailored for the 6502. So, you know, it's got like division and modulus in it and so on. So I'm going to do some fiddling later. But for now, let's just try and make submit work. So all the code for this actually lives in the CCP. And will be here. So, uh, what we want to do is, well, first, let's put a, uh, do I actually have, I don't actually have a defined CCP here. Let's, let's make one. So that's going to be one byte for the drive, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that for the file name, uh,
like so. And on entry, we get the BIOS, we get the drive, try and open the dollar 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 sub file. Now in real CPM, the, the loader, the BIOS, actually, hang on, let me get that right. In real CPM, the CCP will reset the BDOS here. And the BDOS will then reply with a hint as to whether this file exists. This avoids needing to scan the directory when the CCP starts up. But we're going to do it the easy way for now. So low byte of submit FCP. Jagus R two XFCB open. So this will set carry on error. So if the carry is set, uh, we need a way to figure out whether the uh, whether the submit file is actually open, we're just going to overwrite the drive byte with an invalid value. CBDR. Okay. Dot fill. This should be dot res. I've been using a different assembler. Okay. So that will open it. Now here, So we want to read it from the submit file. So to do that, we are going to get the record count. Uh, if the record count is zero, Uh, let me think how this works. If the record count is zero, then we actually want to delete the file and go back to the keyboard. I am going to Pull this stuff out, I think. Read command from keyboard. And we're also going to have a read command from submit file. So if the record count is zero, delete it. Uh, 
and uh, mark the submit file as not used. We are going to sta r six f c v r to there. So this means that the next time through, we won't try to read from the submit file. And actually reads the command from the keyboard. So that here we have uh, x is the record count, and we know it's not zero. So decrement. Set the current record to the last record in the file. We now want to, it's called commud line. We're now going to set the DMA address and then read one record into the command line. We now want to we now want to shorten the file by one. So we've already we have not updated the record count. So we are going to do this again. So load the record count, decrement it, and write it back. And because we're fiddling with the FCB directly, we will also want Record count mark FCB as modified, and then uh, XFCB close, and then we're going to close the file. And remember that this actually just syncs the FCB to disk. So this will write the updated record count to disk. And we'll need to import that. OK. So we now want to print the command. So we're going to do that by we are going to need a counter for this
but that's not going to be right because this is testing at the end of the loop and we want to test at the beginning of the loop so that a zero length command will do the right thing. <clears throat> like so. And do a new line and exit back to the system. Well, exit back to the code above. Okay, so let's give that a try. And in fact, uh, because that file already exists on the system, then as soon as I start up CPM, it will try start trying to execute it. And it didn't do anything. Oh no, it's been, it's probably been deleted. Yes, it was deleted because I changed something. Right, that did not do anything because the CCP only looks for this file on a warm boot. So now if I type control C, then nothing happens. It's not working. So, first let's check this. Okay, that looks right. Ah, this is backwards. If the drive is FF, it's invalid, therefore it's negative, so we do the keyboard. Okay, now let's try it. Let's test sub. My god, it worked. So now if I do a DIR, the submit file's gone. Wow, that actually worked. I'm amazed. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um, I was expecting that to take way longer. Uh, we should probably put some error handling in. Let's... Um, file filing, cannot open file, bad sub. Um, and then we want to warm boot the system. That goes wrong because it isn't a syntax error. So actually, we won't do that. That was my phone. Uh, 
because here we actually want to make sure the file is deleted. Yep, I'll leave that up here. Okay, so BDOS exit is undefined. BDOS exit. Call it warm boot by any chance. I did not. Exit program it was. Ah, oh, wordy symbols, the best kind. Okay, that seems to work. The, the way these work is really cunning. By taking the last record from the file, the state is as it, that is, how far through the file we're currently executing just happens automatically. We just keep going until we run out of lines and then, it, you know, everything is fine. Um, we can do a warm boot halfway through running the submit file and the next time round it'll resume from where it left off. It is very elegant. It also involves a lot of disk access. So let's fire up the, uh, the other emulator. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. This one. And just see how horribly slow this is. Okay, so... This is now running a BBC Master with lots, lots more memory. So we start. Uh, so we can type test.sub. We can run it. Not too bad. Uh, the, the the Acorn MOS disk system is actually caching writes, uh, updating uh, running these commands is only ever modifying is only ever accessing the directory. So uh, and we're using two directory records which is 256 bytes which is the size of a MOS sector so this is all fitting within MOS's disk buffer so it should actually be slower if um, if these were doing anything else like running transient commands then it would be slower but it works And yes, it's removed the subfile. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, 
Well, that was easy. Oh yeah, I will fire this up again. So the other C program that I have is STAT, which is an all-purpose program that does all sorts of things in dubious ways. So the simplest thing is it just tells you the status of the current disks. Uh, you can ask it for help using the world's worst user interface, and it will dump everything it can do here. You can get the size of files, except that doesn't work, and I'm still trying to figure out why something about my C CPM bindings aren't working. You can show the current device mapping using the I.O. byte, which in our system is constant, so you can't actually change this even though, like, you should be able to. I have to put my equals sign. There we go. So I can say that the console is on the printer and uh, it should have done something but it hasn't you can see extended disk information so this shows you shows us that we have you know this many records 63 kilobyte drive capacity is wrong. I think we should have twice that. 256 records per extent. I am not convinced about. Uh, so an extent is 16384 bytes. A record is 128 bytes. Yes, that is also wrong. Okay, there's some bugs I need to fix here. Um, I didn't understand the CPM file system as well as I did when I wrote this. Anyway, let's get rid of that. Okay, uh, we have a few more commands we need to do. One of which is rename. So let's do that. So first we need to implement the uh, the CCP command for doing it. So this is going to it's going to parse an FCB for the first one. Hang on a second, what are we doing? Okay, parse the first FCB. Uh, we now want to so this is really annoying it's not our fault it's just the way CPM works the rename system call takes some very special uh, parameters so parse valid user FCB will pass an FCB into user FCB. We are now going to pass the second one. Into user FCB two which is in the second 16 bytes of user FCB. So this is actually overlapping the allocation map of user FCB. And it's worse than that. Um, there's actually some more work we need to do Sorry, we're going to have to do this elsewhere. Uh, 
as valid user F FCB2 because this needs to be within jump range of invalid file name, that's why. And we're just going to rename a thing for consistency, like so. So now we are going to load user FCB and call BDOS rename and exit. Nothing much to it. We do need to implement BDOS rename which will go somewhere So the rename system call then takes the two FCBs, one after the other, overlapping. This is in fact the same syntax that transient commands use. And I think there is actually something else we need to do. Um, I think we need to take equals out of the list of invalid file name characters. and make it make it a terminator that's going to be irritating it's going to have to be it needs to be there and there and there and there and now this file is too big. So this is trying to go to exit, which is here. I think this wants to be So if we do this, then we can call that when we need to test for a terminator character. And then it will set carry if it is. Actually, actually, let's have it set Z when it is. So then here, all we need to do is to set non z which we want to do without changing any of the registers uh, no there is in fact no easy way to do that so we are in fact going to do it like hang on a second uh, if we if if this compares equal, then we know that carry is set because we figured out earlier that a subtracting one value from itself gives you Z and C set. 
so that we know the carry is set here. So we just clear carry there. Okay. So is terminator character branch if carry set to exit? And this is valid file name character. Branching to invalid FCP. That's an error. Oh, oh, we have this handy. Okay, I think that will work. Yeah, and it's, it now fits. Uh, I hate doing this kind of flag mangling. Okay, rename. Foo bar. It calls rename. Rename foo. That should have produced an error. Oh, it doesn't produce an error because a empty um, FCB is valid, but we don't want to allow that. So, So we're actually going to uh, user FCB plus XFCB first byte of the file name cannot be a space. It must be a valid file name. If it is, then this is an error. And we want to do that as well for user FCB2. Okay. Right. Right. Not right. Right. So I believe that in our pars FCB code, I have forgotten to change all the terminators, all the terminator code. So wipe, check for drive, read the file name, here we go. Uh, JSR is terminator char, branch if carry set to exit. That means it is no longer, we, we stop the uh, FCB here. Is valid for the HRBCS exit. It 
is terminator char. It's terminator char BCS exit. Okay. Ren foo equals bar. Bad file name. Grr. I'm not convinced I'm getting that right, so let's just do it like that. Okay, that has in fact done the thing, um, but it's done it kind of badly. It has overwritten something. Yeah, I did not. Uh, so that's tried to wipe user FCB2's allocation buffer uh, and the stuff after the end of it, but I did not allocate space for that. So that's actually going to want to be um, size of XFCB minus 16. No? dot size of yes well this was wrong anyway but that hasn't helped so it has overwritten the current user Why the current user is not stored in the CCP's variables, it's stored in the BDOS. So I would expect. I would not expect that to overwrite it at that point. So let's just print these out, put in a return there. this is actually running it. No, it is. So if I put an RTS there, it should be doing nothing at all, right? It is doing something. Has this got nothing to do with rename at all? Yeah, it has. It's got nothing to I'll try that again with a command that's not user, actually. Right. Uh, I have just broken something. That's what's wrong. And I bet I've broken parse FCB. So this will be the Terminator stuff. That should be clear carry. That's what's wrong. That's better. Okay, ren foo bar unimplemented. Good. Ren foo equals bar. Bad file name again. Ha. Ah. Clear. 
clear check for the drive is it a colon yeah uh, dot is term is terminator character if yes exit Is Terminator character if yes exit is Terminator if yes exit in fact we should be hitting this one so if it's space set carry return if it's an equal sign set carry return otherwise clear carry return that should work but it isn't So we're going to have to debug this. We are at 78E4. OK, ren foo equals bar. So the first one will be ren. The second one will be foo. This is the one we want to debug. So we skip the white space, set the user field number in the FCB, we get the current user, which is zero, and 8A is where the pointer for the FCB is, 7B95 is the FCB. 7B95 is here, down here, this is the top of video memory, so we're right up at the top of memory here, which is correct. That's what we wanted. So let's store that. Wipe the FCB. We can skip this. Uh, where are we? We are at 78F. We've just done this. We've loaded loaded the drive DYA LD20 blah 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 CPY20. That must be, yeah, that's that one. Uh, so this line 790B is where the where we actually start parsing. Okay, we're here. Command offset is four, as we expect. Our buffer is at seven a f one. You can see it contains ren foo equals bar. So get the drive letter. There is no drive letter. Uh, or rather, it's not zero. Look for a colon. No colon, we just leave that unset. Uh, here is our FCB being filled out. We now read the file name. I know what's going on. That Okay, I think it is working. I think it's stopping at the equal sign. Then uh, it's trying to read the next FCB, and that is succeeding too. It's seeing the equal sign as the first character of the next FCB, 
and that that's producing an empty FCB and then it's failing validation later because it doesn't let like having two FCBs. I will continue to step through this. So we've read the character is 46. Is terminator character is it a space? No. Is it an equal sign? No. Clear carry return. Asterisk. It's not an asterisk. Is it a valid file name character? Yes, it is. Store. And again. Last time through. This is, this is the last correct character for F. Store. Okay, and this one is 3D, it's the equal sign. Is it a terminator? Carry is set. Yes, it is. So we go to the exit routine. We write back the command offset, which is seven. And exit with a valid, yeah. That is actually working. So what we actually want to do is this is the only place where a equal sign is this is the only place where an equal sign is valid. Uh, I think that we want to I think we want to reuse this to be honest. Ah, but this is inside, this is defined inside this procedure above. I think we can do this. Yeah, that's kind of, this is all kind of terrible, but is valid. I'll do clean up later. Is that a valid file name character? Uh, is it No, we can't do that there. That's a pain. Okay, if it's a space, then we actually, we want to continue. So if it is not a space, is it an equal sign? If it's not an equal sign, it is then it must be neither a space or an equal sign, otherwise continue. Good. Good. That's working. Okay. We've done the CCP side of things. We now need to do the actual implementation in the BDOS. 
So we need to add the entry point and here. Okay, now I need to look something up at this point. The rename instruction, the rename command in the CCP, actually takes the parameters backwards. So you, it takes the new file first and the old file second. Right, but the rename system call takes the old name first. So we want to, it's largely the same code as in the, as for delete find all directory entries that match the file name part in the first 16 bytes of the FCB then we are going to replace the uh, well, the file name in the dear end with the one in the uh, the second 16 bytes of the FCB. So this is more annoying than it should be. So we are going to load one byte from the FCB. Ah! Ah! Uh, that's irritating. We need um, we need two pointer indices and there's only one register. So And we're using A, so it's not like we can just move, shuffle things around through A. We are, in fact, using all three registers. So, how do we do this? The answer is, annoyingly, and with temporaries. So X is the counter, This gets the pointer into the FCB. 
Uh, no, no, that's not what we want to do. We want to add 16 at this point. This gets the byte from the new file name. We now want to get x plus 1 into y. Now this will work, but it just makes me really miserable, so we're not going to do it like that at all. Uh, dear int index. So this is going to be a simple uh, current dearent comma y ink ten plus zero ink ten plus one. Um, L, mm, LDA temp plus zero, and this can be FCB F1. Compare with FCB T3 plus one, meaning that we've reached the end of the file name. Okay, that's not that bad. Right. And there is in fact a bug here, which is I haven't inverted the names of the files. So this is actually taking old file, new file, which is wrong. So I'm going to have to flip that, but uh, why are we getting invalid file name? See, this was working. And also, shouldn't this be, shouldn't this be a hard error? This should indeed be a hard error. This should be rewinding the stack and going back to the uh, and going back to the main loop. So T. Transfer the stack pointer into X, store that in stack pointer. Wait a minute. Yeah. So uh, 
prints the message in XA and returns to the main loop. So this will be call that. Print a new line. Rewind the stack. And jump back to the main loop. So this then becomes jump error. And we are printing a new line here because this costs three bytes. So by taking off this, and this, we actually save one byte. Jump abs across page border. Why is it warning R? Um, um, because I believe that some versions of the 6402 have a bug where if the address being loaded by the jump is across a page border, it would be jump end, then bad stuff happens. But it's not documented in this file, as far as I can tell. Well, it's going to move as soon as we put some more code in, so let's just... Okay. Right. Okay, so I think that just tried to rename something, but there was no foo. Test.sub bar. Why am I getting an invalid file name there? Have I broken FCB parsing? No, that works fine. So that works. That doesn't work. I think it's the extensions it doesn't like. But that works. It even deleted it. Okay, more debugger. Yeah, looking at the time, I suspect that this is going to be the last thing I do today. I think that's bailed here. What happens if I use a question mark? Like oh, equal sign. Yes, that's not even reaching this code.
Okay, it's the second file it doesn't like. Test.sub test.baz That worked. Ram test.sub test. That didn't work. It's insisting that the second file has a uh, extension. So read the file name. Skip non dot character. Skip non dot file name characters. Yeah. If the character we see is a terminator character, this needs to be here because we want to do this before we call inks, not after, because we want to be left looking at the dot or Uh, hang on, hang on. At this point, we don't want to break. If we're looking at a terminator, put that back the way it was. Okay, the order of this code is weird. Right, we look at if the character we're currently looking at is a dot is not a dot. Move on to the next one. Was it a zero? Then stop. Is it a terminator? Then stop. Is it a valid file name character? What we want to do here is consume bytes until we reach the end of the file name. So this is the diffs of what we've actually done. So, that, yeah, this all looks fine. the wrong piece of code. Yeah, I don't think there's anything particularly. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. We are here. branch if equal to exit. Uh, we I don't believe we were properly testing for the end of line. Okay, ren test.sub to foo. Bad file name. That's a different error. Okay, we want to check to see whether the remaining characters are valid, but then we discard them. If they're not valid, then we fail.
that's right, that's right, that's right. This is why you should always be using a version control system. It's not so much of preserving changes and your revision history, it's more about being able to look at what you've done today and find the stupid bugs. That produces bad file name. So I think that when we reach the end of the line, we are Not parsing things correctly. Okay, I'm gonna have to hit the debugger again. I'm try rather, rather trying to avoid that, really. Okay. Um. Right, so 7BAA is where our, well, 7B90-ish is where our FCB is. And we can see it right there. So we have, that's at 7BA. Okay, here are our SCBs. Those are both fine. So we are looking at 7BAA, 9A. So we're looking at the first FCB. It is not a space. Now we look at 7BBA, that should be this one. It is also not a space. So now we go into BDOS rename. I just forget to rebuild. I think I forgot to rebuild. Now I get a bad file name. Right, it's more extensions. It's a stupid parse code. That's the problem. Um, also, I'm thinking that I want to change some of this stuff so that the parse code doesn't wipe the allocation table. I think the parse code should just set the 16 bytes of the uh, the top half of the FCB. Then the XFCB library that we're using will p wipe the rest of it when you call create or open. But I will do that later. Okay, let's go. Let's go for the debugger. Okay, so it's seven nine five D E F 
six zero. So A contains two E. We're looking at the dot. So is it a dot? Yes, it is. We go to here. We read the extension. So skip the dot. Set up Y. 7B08. Here is our input buffer. Um, X is 9. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, we're on the, the byte after. Well, we're on the S of sub. So load it. Yes. Not the end of the line. Not the not after the third extension character. Is it terminator character? Carry is clear, is not. Is it another dot? Why is that there? Oh, that's kind of irrelevant. A file name with two dots in it is actually, actually a file name with two dots in it is invalid. Character set to uh, return with carry. So with not a dot. Uh, is it a star? It's not a star. Is it a valid file name character? Yes, it is. So we store it. Go round again. We get the U. Exactly the same thing should apply here. We're on the B. OK, this is the first interesting one. We have read a space. Uh, is, hang on a second. We missed something. Compare with C. Break if. Ah! Ah, okay. Uh, we've hit this condition because we've this. That was the third extension character. So we now skip over to here. Was the thing we just read a. Okay, I know what's happening. Do I? Yes, I do know what's happening. So we are looking at the Yes, this code is wrong. We are currently looking at the character after the file name. That's that space there. This code is expecting to find an extension, which there isn't one, because I just cut and pasted all this stuff from further up. So that's why this is here. So in fact, we're going to ignore this. We're going to ignore an extra dot at this point. Uh, what we want to do is to skip valid file name characters until we get a terminator. So break if carry is set. Otherwise, uh, naturally we want to do is valid file name char. If it's not a valid file name char, Fail with the, yes, this is an invalid FCB. 
otherwise fetch the next character. And this code we actually want this to be here This work. If we're looking at a space, uh, if we're looking at a dot, then stop scanning. If it's a terminator character, then we've reached the end of the FCB, so exit successfully. If it's not valid, fail. Otherwise, go round again. And I think that this only is causing a problem because this is the first time we're actually using two parameters to a command. So let's try this. OK. That parsed, but it didn't actually do anything. Which is, you know, not so great, but at least it parsed. Okay, that's correct. And that's correct. So now we go into the BDOS code. four five six okay we're here we are reading I'm sure we'll want to go around this again we are reading bytes we did indeed find a file oh I know what the problem is I'm not writing this back to disk that's what I'm not doing It's renamed it. So let's think we can put it back again. <laughs> and that didn't work. Why didn't that work? That failed to find a file called foo. That's why it that didn't work. So uh, is it seven B nine B the FCB? Yes, it is. Well, that looks fine. F O O, not so spaces. So why is, look at find first, why is that not finding it? So 
So A is C. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C. That should be correct. So home drive, reset dear pause, read dear entry, check dear pause. No more files. We do have files. That's the user want to see deleted files. Um, just sudden thought. Did I remember? Did I erase the metadata part of the file when I did the rename? No, I didn't. I only replaced the file name characters. Okay, we're here. So we load a byte from the FCB. Is it a question mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, compare characters. We're here. So here is the dear end we're looking at. So we actually want to go four times to get to the next directory entry. I didn't put a breakpoint there. Seven five. Okay. So one. Uh, one, two, three, four. We should be on the second sector. Yep, and now we want to go into the third sector, so we go another four, two, three, four, uh, four. That was five times. It's late. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. Here is the directory buffer. It put the file name in the wrong place. There is a zero byte before the F, so obviously nothing matches. That's why that's not working. So we are actually copying from We're copying like that. So ren foo bar. Ah, oh, the foo is, that, is invalid. So can I do star dot? Yes, that matches. So I should be able to do ren star dot bar okay that's used the power of wild cards to rename it and now I should be able to put this back to test sort sub the way it was good okay in fact we shouldn't have been able to use wild cards there I should be checking and not letting the user do it uh, it doesn't say anything here but Renaming with a wildcard doesn't actually make any sense because it will rename all directory entries of all files that match to be the same and you'll end up with duplicate directory entries, which is wrong. Uh, traditionally, it's the CCP that does this. 
speaking of which, we need to fix this. So, pars FCB needs to change. We don't want to wipe all the FCB. We actually want to wipe up to uh, the four bytes of metadata. The rest of it we leave untouched. In fact, I forgot to update the comment from last time, so. Uh, these, what we're dealing with here are XFCBs, so we do have the user number. But I think we also want, no, no. This is all the job of clear. So this has cleared uh, EX and CR, but we actually want to do all the rest. So LDY, XFCB, uh, We're actually going to wipe everything up to there, R2. So we're going to want to go all the way up to R2 plus one until equals. And we want the SIF library. Compare Y. OK. So we run it. Test.sub to foo. Did that work? It did. Type foo. That works. Okay, I think that's working fine. Let's just do, yep, that's working too. Uh, in fact, if I go to user one, I'll do dump test.sub. Ah, uh, I haven't done any of the parse code to parse a user number on the front of a drive, because it should eventually work like using file names like this, but I haven't done that. That's an extension, that's not part of core CPM. As I said earlier, CPM actually handles user bytes very badly, which is why I'm putting these XFCB things in. Okay, so that works. So this allows me to go to entry rename, and we just swap these two around. We also no longer need this. So, So that should be ren foo equals test.sub and it works. Ren test.sub equals foo and that works. Okay, I think that's better now. Took long enough, but I think it's better. And it's 22.47 my local time, so Yeah. So next time I need to do update file attributes, which is actually, it's essentially the same code as uh, rename in the BDOS, but there isn't a command for it in the CCP. We actually now have implementations for all of these, which is nice. Uh, You're supposed to be able to set attributes using stat, and stat doesn't work. So uh, I will do some investigation to figure out how that works. But we've got two more system calls to do. Yeah, nothing. 
uh, it's supposed it's supposed to list the uh, for each file that matches the wildcard it's supposed to list the uh, number of records the size in bytes and whatever these are I can't remember what these are this is supposed to be a byte for byte uh, port of the original CPM version written in PLM but I'm not sure I got it right uh, yes and the last system calls are the random access ones that should actually be reasonably straightforward set file attributes is here random access oh and there's this one that'll be nice then it's done apart from the bugs and the missing features